And this is Algebra 2 with Trig, Unit 1C, 1A. We're working on factoring when the A value is 1 and some examples when the A value is greater than 1. Some of the first things that we need to do is look at some vocabulary. Monomials. Monomials are expressions that don't have any pluses or minuses. So like the number 3 or the number 3x, that could be considered a monomial. Negative 2 or negative 2x squared, that could be considered a monomial. Even if you put more letters next to it, that could still be considered a monomial. A binomial is when you combine parts together. Like if you have x plus 3, that would be considered a binomial. That's two parts together. Even if you had a number in front, negative 4x plus 3, that could still be considered a binomial because it's two parts being put together. A trinomial is the sum of three parts, three monomials, like maybe x squared plus 2x minus 4. That could be considered a trinomial because it's made up of three different parts. We've worked with this form before. We often called it the factored form. Or we called it intercept form. Now we're going to look at it as being factored. And then what we used to call standard form, we're now going to call expanded form. Because when you take your two binomials that you're multiplying together, and we talked about that, you multiply the outer to get x squared. You multiply, well, that's the first, sorry. x times x is our first. Then the outer, the inner, and the last to work through FOIL. And you produce this expanded form, x squared plus x minus 56. We can work reverse process and factor. Sometimes it's possible. It's not always possible, but... It is, it's possible that it's not factorable. So if possible, we could factor, and we factor trinomials in this format. So when we work with the basic ones, the ones that have a leading coefficient of 1, we need to think about what multiplies to be the C term and adds to be the B term. And ax squared plus bx plus c, you're looking for what multiplies to be the c term and adds to be the b term. So here are some directions looking at it in terms of letters. It gets a little complicated thinking about that, but you're looking for two numbers that will get dropped into the parentheses that are going to add to be the b value and are going to multiply to be the C value. Like when we look here, we see two numbers that are going to multiply to be 6, and those same two numbers add to be the B number, which is 5. So if we determine that the 2 and the 3 multiply to be 6 and add to be 5, then those would make your factors of your trinomial as x plus 3 and x plus 2. So what can help in this case is to make a table. We put the number that you're trying to add on one side and the number you're trying to multiply on the other. So we call this a sum and product table. So if you have a sum and product table, this will help you visualize or more specifically write out and control some of your work. If you have troubles visualizing it, this will help you give you some organization. You're looking for different ways you can multiply to be 6. Well, there's really two different ways that we can multiply to be 6. 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. 
those multiply to be 6. You might also say that negative 1 and negative 6 and negative 2 and negative 3, those might be able to be ruled out, but we'll talk about that as we go. When looking at our factors to be 6, we're not considering half of 12. So we're not going to take half of 12 or a fourth of 24. We're always going to work with whole numbers, integer values. So if you notice that the 1 and the 6 make 7, the 2 and the 3 make 5, these two would make negatives. So we're most interested in the two numbers that multiply to be 6 and add to be 5. So we put that 2 and the 3 into the parentheses and that's how we factor it apart. So let's give this a try here. We have x squared plus 3x plus 2. You can probably do some of this right in your head, but not everyone can keep that organized. So we have a sum and product. So we're looking for two things that multiply to be 2 that will also add to be 3. Well, really, there's only one way we can multiply to be 2. You might consider negative 1 and negative 2 to be an option, because that does multiply to be 2, but if you think about it, those two numbers are going to add to be a negative. So we're not looking for negative 3. That's a different question. This one is looking for a positive 3. So that's why we're going to use a positive 1 and a positive 2 in our parentheses to make two binomials. A common question is, have I done it right? The best way for you to check if you've done it right is to go through with FOIL and multiply the front, the outer, the inner, and the last. Multiply those out, and you can see when you simplify it that you're getting what the question was in the very beginning. So your two binomials produced the same trinomial that we started with. So now go ahead, pause the video, check out to see what your next trinomial is going to be. So we can look at this one. We can see that we need a 4 to be added together. We need a negative 3 to be multiplied together. So we're looking for our sum and product. Well, the, really the only way to be negative 3 is to be negative 1 and 3, maybe positive 1 and negative 3. And it looks like neither of these add up to be 4. So as long as you have exhausted your options for what multiplies to truly be negative 3, then in this case, this is not factorable, and we would call this prime. Just like we call the number 13 prime, because it doesn't have any additional factors, negative 3 doesn't have any additional factors. So, next we have 144. Well, that's kind of the other extreme. We have negative 24 and we have 144. We're looking for the sum and product. Now, since we're working with the number 144, it's probably really not that bad. We probably know what multiplies to be 144 and adds, or let's say, we, we know of a very common multiple that makes 144. There happens to be several. Now let's also look at 1 times 144. What if that was a possibility? That does multiply to be 144. Is there any chance that adds to be a negative? 
And the answer to that is no. Because when we're looking at things that are going to multiply to be a positive, the numbers have to either both be positive, and that's going to add to be a positive, or the numbers have to both be negative to multiply to be a positive. They have to both be the same. So they have to both be positive, or they both have to be negative. So in this case, we would have to consider these both to be negative. If they're going to add to be a negative 24, they have to both be negative. Negative 2 and 72, or negative 72, that's a possibility, but that's still way away from 24. 3 goes into that. 3 goes into 14, 4 times 2 left over, that's 48. Negative 4 goes into that, negative 36. 5 clearly doesn't go into that because it doesn't end in 5 or 0. 6 goes into that because 2 and 3 do, so 6 has to. 6 goes into that. Negative 2 with 2 left over is going to give us 24. 7 is not going to go into there, but 8 would. 8 goes into it, negative... Um, 8 goes into there with 6 left over, so negative 18. And then negative 12. So if you look at that group, that's a whole bunch of possibilities. Now, some of you may have known right from the beginning. I know what multiplies to be 144. The most common one is the perfect square. Right, The square root of 144 is 12 times 12. That's probably the one most people are most familiar with. If this problem was different, it could still be 144, and it could have been any of these combinations in the middle, where it would be very helpful to know this table, to be able to make this table, to come to it. But if you notice, this one down here is the only one that adds to be negative 24. So this is going to be p minus 12 and p minus 12. That's going to multiply to be 144 and add to be 24. You could also call that p minus 12 squared. Look here at the next one. You might be able to handle this one in your head, which is just fine. That's a great skill. If not, then don't hesitate at making a table. Think about your 6 and the 8, your sum and product. What multiplies to be 8, 1 and 8, 2 and 4, those are the only ways to get to 8. 1 and 8 adds to be 9. That's not what we want. 2 and 4, that adds to be 6. Perfect. Multiplies to be 8, adds to be 6. So we get W with a positive 2 and W with a positive 4. You can check your answer like we could with any of these. Multiply the outer to get W squared. That's actually, uh, it's the first. W times W is the first. W times 4 is the outer, 2 and W, and 2 and 4. So when we group our like terms, we see that that would be 6W, just like the original problem, and then 8. So yes, that checked out perfect. So we can always check anything we factor if it makes the original problem. We're going to come down to some special cases. These are ones that aren't as much calculated as they are following a pattern. So this one here, I've kind of scribbled around it, so I'm just going to drop it down a little bit so I can 
get to work in there a little closer. This is a squared minus b squared. So the pattern that comes with a squared minus b squared is what is the binomial that would multiply together to make this? So when we multiply the front together, we need to make a squared. That would clearly be a and a. a times a gives you a squared. The number that, or the values that multiply together to be b squared would be b times b. That's really the only way you get b squared, is to say b times b. Now, how can we get zero in the middle? When we do the outer a times b, and here, essentially a times b, if one of them was a positive and one of them was a negative, they'd cross out. So if the signs are different, a plus b and a minus b, then that pattern would always work out. So let's give that a try. We'll come down here to this example. x squared minus 4. Notice how it's different from the other ones we were just doing. The other ones we were just doing were trinomials. They had three parts. This only has two parts. Notice the part that's missing. The b term is missing. The x is missing. It's got the x squared and it has the constant, the c value. So it's missing the b part. So in this, you might want to consider maybe mentally, maybe physically writing it. What is the square root of both of those terms? Do you have something times something that makes the first term? Do you have something times something that makes the second term? So x times x is making the x squared. The 2 times 2 is making the 4. But if you just had signs in there, we'd come up, if we had them both positive or both negative, we'd get a B term. But for us not to have a B term, these have to be opposites of each other. So if we checked our work, x squared minus 2x, positive 2x, and negative 4, this is going to reduce and cross those 2x's out because one's positive and one's negative, and you get what you started with, x squared minus 4. For letter B, we have a tricky situation. We have a 9x squared and a 36. When possible, you do always want to try to identify, is there a number that can come out? So I notice I have a 9 and a 36. So I'm looking for a GCF, a greatest common factor, that can be pulled out of that. So I notice that 9 goes into 9, and 9 goes into 36 four times. So I can factor that 9 out. I'm pulling that 9 to the front, so I write it here. And then I've already learned that x squared minus 4 is x minus 2, x plus 2, or you can write it x plus 2, x minus 2. Write it either method you want. And that would be fully factored. You cannot mistakenly factor it apart. You're not allowed to factor it apart by thinking what multiplies to be 9x squared, what multiplies to be 36. This is 3x. This is 6. So my answer must be 3x plus 6, 3x minus 6. 
you haven't done anything wrong. It still tests itself right back into what we started with. These cross out and you're 9x squared minus 36. It worked out great. But that's not fully factored. You have to pull the additional 3 out. And that would be 3x plus 2. Then you have to pull the additional 3 out again. Which is another 3x minus 2. And that's how we got that 9x plus 2x minus 2. You have to factor completely. Let's jump down here to letter E. Let's try to factor that one. Pause the video, check it out, start it back up, see how you did. So with this one, do you have a binomial? Do you have two parts? Do you know the square root of your first term? Do you know the square root of your second term? This becomes 5x, because you take the square root of 25, take the square root of x squared, that's 5x. This is 6, so you're going to have 5x plus 6, 5x minus 6, and there's no simplifying that apart. There's no additional factors that can come out of that.